Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for a community of professionals that are looking to share, learn, and grow where you can talk openly and freely about the highs and lows in your business? If so, I want to invite you to check out my inner circle at AngelaProfit.com slash membership. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet, and thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Weddings Unveiled. Today, I'm super excited to talk to Chelsea B. Foster of Chelsea B. Foster, and she helps other businesses with workflows and productivity. She is an educator and a coach, and I'm so excited to talk to her today. Thank you for being on, Chelsea. How are you? I am good. Thank you so much for having me. I am so looking forward to this conversation. Awesome. Well, I want to set it up for our listeners here because we actually had an opportunity to talk a little bit before we did the podcast and really just a very quick overview of some things that I really want you to touch on is about burnout proof through productivity and workflows and taking the time to like step back and organize. And then the third thing is the importance of building an in-person relationship. Even though social media is great, that is still super, super important. So I want to make sure that you hit on those today. And then let's jump in and tell our listeners, like, how did you get into this industry? Like, what is your background? Where's the starting point? Yeah. So I actually, I am classically, not classically trained. I'm just trained as, (laughs) that makes me sound very sophisticated. (laughs) No, I'm just trained as an educator. I went to school to be a secondary science teacher and I taught physics for two years right after graduation. And I absolutely loved it. Then my husband started a tech company. You might've heard of it. It's called Zapier. And so we obviously had to move to California to Silicon Valley where he could talk to all of the other companies that they wanted to work with. And so my teaching certificate didn't transfer and I had to figure out what I wanted to do. And for about four years, I kind of had no clue what that was. But finally, I realized like I had this desire to be a stay-at-home mom at one point and have my own business that can support that so that I have something that is my own still. Um, And so I decided I wanted to start my own business. And my sister was getting married at the time. And I had designed my own wedding invitations and a couple of my friends' wedding invitations and also party invitations. And so I was like, you know what? Like, maybe I could do this because I love graphic design and I love weddings. And so, like, let's try it out. And so my sister was actually my first client in the wedding stationery business. And then I continued doing that for what, a year and a half before I decided that I really wanted something else with my business. And I wanted to feel like I was teaching again. And I already was, I was having conversations with others in the wedding industry about how to organize their business, how to simplify, how to streamline and how to automate different pieces of it. And I finally wanted to realize I could do that for my job. Like I could just get to talk to other wedding pros about how to build their businesses and make their businesses work for them instead of them burning their wheels day in and day out on their business and not getting any traction. And so that is when my new business, Chelsea B. Foster was formed. And I love it. I love getting to have conversations with other wedding pros and talk to them about their businesses, figure out where they're struggling um, and how I can help them find more freedom. That is amazing. (laughs) Yeah, that's been my kind of winding journey here. (laughs) Yeah, which is amazing because honestly, I mean, I talk to so many 
people in this industry. And first off, how most of us start is we do it for friends or family. Exactly. <laughs> it's fun and we love it. And then we start to take care of other people, but then we forget to take care of ourselves and our own businesses. And so I love how you took a step back and you're like, I love to educate me too. Yes. <laughs> and then I, you know, want to help others. And I'm sure in your area, like in Silicon Valley is just known for amazing tech companies, which plug for your husband's company. We love zapping things away. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I love hearing that you guys are using it. <laughs> yes, we love it. It integrates with Infusionsoft. It integrates with so many things. But I will say, I mean, I'm a tech nerd, but that's not really the norm in the creative industry. And so I think that it's fascinating that you have been able to find people that understand uh, automation because so many people that I talked to, including myself years ago, when someone tried to sell me on the program of Infusionsoft and they're like, you can just automate this and this and this. I'm like, I'm in the wedding industry. Like you cannot automate anything. Every couple and every bride is different. Their learning style is different. Their planning style is different, but it really got me thinking and it got me thinking more and more. And I'm like, you know what? I need to start this experience of making sure nothing falls through the cracks and I'm going to run this strategy and process the way that I know best through psychology and not let the client tell me what they want. And so that's when I kind of like woke up and I was like, oh, automation will work in like 90% of the time. <laughs> so it's just, it's the best feeling. Like um, I'll tell you most of my clients, when we start talking about automation, I don't even bring up the word automation. Mm -hmm. We talk about simplifying and making sure that nothing is falling through the cracks. That's perfect. That, that is actually what they care about. They don't care how it gets done. And really, honestly, the technical part, like you don't have to understand the technical part as long as you know that it is happening and that your clients are being taken care of. Right. Because that's all that matters. Exactly. Is the follow up and the follow through and closing the loop. And it's just, it's not a struggle just in the wedding industry. I think we're more sensitive to it in the wedding industry because it's such an emotional money spending experience, but it's that way in every industry as, you know, just as a consumer, I find that. But what would you say, like, I know the answer to this, but for our listeners who don't, like, what would you say is just super special, unique about the services and what you provide? Yeah. So I actually love to look at everything from an educator standpoint. And so making sure that I am actually teaching you through the process, instead of just like doing stuff for you, I really want to help you figure out how best to organize your business and then teach you how to continue doing that yourself so that you're actually able to implement and take action and make these systems work for you so that you can get back your freedom and go live your best life. That's awesome. I mean, do you think that a lot of people that get, by the time they get to you to help them just automate or simplify, like, are they almost to the point of just burnout or are you finding that earlier people that are getting in, or I would say younger people that are getting into the industry, they come in with a different mindset. And I think that we had a conversation actually about mindset where it's either they come in really excited and they're new and they don't have a strategy or they are just so completely burned out that they don't know what to do with themselves. So what would you say are, are your clients when they come to you at that point? Where are they? Yeah, I actually get both. So I love love, love helping new business owners figure out their systems. The ones that already know, like I need to have my A game in place before my first client. Like that just makes my heart sing. Like it's going to save you so much trouble down the road because you have your systems in place and you understand how they work. So even if you do have to make some tweaks to them, it's a very quick modification. But I also have clients that come to me and they literally are ready to quit. And they're like, I just, I want to try and give one more thing a shot before I throw in the towel. And for those clients, it's like, I just want to wrap my arms around them and give them a giant hug and say, it's going to be okay. Like we're going to get there. But yeah, having systems in place, like it changes everything. 
Yeah. I think because I'm, I guess on the older side, you would say like the people that come to me are so almost at like a standstill of they had like some, like almost like a tragedy happened. Like, oh my God, my computer crashed. I don't know where any of my documents are. Or I mean, like kind of like a freak out moment or they have a client that they just are not meshing well with and they're literally driving them crazy or they're being sued. I feel like I get these extreme people that are like, I just don't know what to do. And it's like, wow, I love it when people, like you said, like new business owners who are actually being taught from the mindset of put strategies, put processes in place when you are new and that can help set you up for fast success. And I know that a lot of business owners that I work with, I almost call it just like a a branding facelift Mm -hmm. of where we really have to go through and take a step back and say, let's push out all the noise and let's come up with a process. So like when you first start working with somebody, regardless of how long they've been in business, like what's like a nugget for our listeners? So it's like the very first thing that you tell them to do. Yeah. So I actually do a mini audit with them from the beginning and we evaluate everything in the business. Where do you feel like you're struggling? What are the tasks that you hate doing? You dread them. You put them off until the very last second. They're the ones that you are even thinking about, like, do I have to do those at all? But I know I do because they're like client facing things and I should be doing this. So we go through and we evaluate all of those how you're feeling about all of the tasks that you have to do. And then we make a plan from there. Cause I guarantee you 25% of the things that are on your list don't need to be on there. Right. And so finding those like immediately takes so much pressure off of them. They're like, I don't have to do this. I can either automate this or outsource it or just take it off the list. And I'm like, yes, yes, you can. Yeah. I also think a lot of people, well, two things, like when I say the word outsource, I immediately get pushback from people and they say one of two things. Oh, I can't afford that. Or, well, they're not going to do it like me. So I don't trust anybody. So when people, I'm sure you get the same thing. Like when people say that to you. Exactly like them. Yeah, exactly. So like, what do you say to them? (laughs) So I love to, and I actually did a training recently on this, um, about how to use the grid method to figure out like what tasks you should be outsourcing. And it's just a simple grid on what the tasks that you enjoy, the tasks that you don't enjoy, the tasks that you're good at and the tasks that you're not good at. And so you fill out the grid and the tasks that you're not great at and that you don't enjoy doing. Those are the things that you need to figure out how to get off your plate. And once they realize like, these are the tasks that I hate, they're draining my energy. I'm really bad at them. So they're taking all of my time and my time is worth like, let's say $50 an hour. And I can pay someone 10, $15 an hour to do this. Like that just saves me what $40 an hour right there. That's exactly. And so when they realize that, then they're like, Oh, it makes so much more sense. And they're like, I can let go of this. And it's, it feels good for me to let go of it now because I realize the benefit to me. Yeah. Like my mom, she does not understand two things that I do pretty regularly. One is if I have a downtown meeting, which I live downtown, but with parking and paying for parking as our city is growing. It's yes. like I can sit in traffic in my, with my laptop in an Uber and get things done and actually make money. Exactly. And she doesn't understand like, what's the point of a blowout bar? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> Well, you can get your hair washed and curled and fixed like once a week. And it's awesome because it saves like hours and I yes. sit there and get a, an entire presentation or a hundred emails. And again, that's time well spent. Exactly. <laughs> it's just, I don't have time to cut coupons. She's like, you guys <laughs> live for convenience. And I'm like, no, mom, it's a different mindset. And finally, I got her to get the Amazon Prime out. <laughs> it like took a while. But again, it's just that mindset. Um, what would you say is, do you have any clients where it's like the same aha moment over and over, like that just sticks out in your head? 
They're all a little different because everyone comes to me in different stages of their business and we work on different parts of their business. But typically the biggest ahas happen when they're like, oh, I don't have to be doing this all myself. Because a lot of my clients are solopreneurs. They may have a VA on the side or an intern, but no one that they rely on heavily to help them with their business consistently every single day, every single week. And so like that realization that I don't have to do everything by myself, I can do this and I can afford to hire someone if I want to, that just takes a huge weight off their shoulders and they feel like they can do it again. Yeah. And so for those of you who don't know VA virtual assistant, (laughs) and so again, I feel like, again, because some of the people that I help, they've been around 20 plus years and they're like, you know, I'll have them listen to like a Tim Ferriss chapter about something in a book. And I'm like, I'm not the only one saying this. Like I'll ask people like, who inspires you? Who do you listen to? Like on the entrepreneur side. And so a lot of people will say, well, I listen to Tim Ferriss, good to great, you know, or whatever, um, books that are out there. Well, I love audiobooks. I don't really have yes, to read. Yes, me too. Um, but <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, it's like they listen, um, I can't remember which book it is, but he talks about how he uses people overseas to like do these small tasks and um, people just can't wrap their head around it. And I feel like we're so closed off inside our city or state or in the United States. And like, there's such a bigger picture and a bigger world out there that like you just said, can help us get to where we want to go. Exactly. And I think too, like once people have their systems in place and they have a workflow set out, it's a lot easier to be able to hand something off. And so they see like, oh, this should really only take someone like five or 10 minutes and it's taking me like 20. Um, Like let's outsource this to someone that can do it faster. And it's easy to outsource because you already have what you need done written out. You just have to say here, please do it. Yeah. How do you handle clients that come to you and just say, oh, I can't do that. Like the clients have to talk to me and how, what are your, what's your experience in helping people understand that they, it doesn't have to be you, you, it can be someone else. Yeah. So client experience is a huge, huge deal for me and for my clients. And especially in the wedding industry, um, I totally understand that client experience needs to be a thousand percent for every single client. But just because you want to give them a great experience doesn't mean that they can't talk to someone else on your team that, and honestly, a lot of times having more people up to a certain point can help them feel more comfortable because everyone knows what's going on. They're all on the same page. It feels more like a family versus just like a mom sitting there talking to them. And I think it can give clients a different perspective and more ease if they do have that family feeling and knowing that a whole team is taking care of them versus just one person who may or may not let things slide, slip through the cracks. Right. It's, there's a lot of moving pieces. There are. It's crazy. And I don't know how, like I know how, but I'm always impressed by wedding planners that are solopreneurs that are booking weddings every single weekend, sometimes two weddings a weekend. I don't know how you guys are keeping it all straight when you don't have anything written down. Like those people that are able to keep everything in your head, kudos to you. But also like, I'm terrified for the day when you get sick because no one else knows what's going on. (laughs) Right. It's funny because I mean, now I guess it's more like socially accepted, but years ago before social media and all of that, I mean, that's how I started to actually hire my friends, which is not a good idea, you guys, Um, because (laughs) people kept asking like, hey, my wedding's on July 4th. And I'm I'm like, oh, I really want to help you, but I already have a wedding that weekend. So like I can plan it and design it, but then, you know, have somebody else execute it, which Mm -hmm. worked okay. But then it started, people would say like planners that are just one women shows and no offense guys, but like a lot of people around me, you know, they're women. And so then they would tell brides who would come in, you know, 
talk to five, four or five different planners. They're like, well, how many weddings do you do in a weekend? And how many weddings do you do in a month and in a year? And I'm like, that is none of your business. A <laughs> and yeah. B I'm, I don't count. Like I'm not trying, I'm not in a contest with anyone, but what I can tell you is we have an awesome team and I'm not going to take on something if my team can't handle it. So I'm not understanding where you're coming. Why are you asking? And then a lot of times the girls would end up hiring me and then they're like, Oh, well I met with so-and-so and she was saying how you do all these weddings and you're not at every event and blah, blah, blah. Like, are you going to be at my event? And I'm like, it's not about that. It's about a team effort. Exactly. And if you are counting on one person to execute your vision, you are sadly mistaken because yeah. I'm just a chick with some ideas without my vendors and without my team. And if you plan ahead the right way, by the time you get to execution day, the team should be rock solid on who's doing what. It shouldn't exactly. be that hard. So exactly. Yeah, it's just the education process baffles me sometimes. I'm like, where did you hear that? <laughs> right. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's crazy. How do you recommend um, busy business owners to take a step back and organize their business so that they can go forward and like think ahead? <laughs> yeah. So I do not recommend trying to do everything in like one fell swoop like that that's going to overwhelm you even more than having everything be disorganized. So what I love to have my clients do is to take it one step at a time. And as you're working on a project, whatever the next project is on your list, start building out your workflows. And all you have to do to do this is write down what you're doing. So whenever you go to send an email, like just keep a checklist on your desk and write down sent email on this topic. And just keep a list of every single thing that you're doing for that project. That is your workflow. Because I guarantee you, you do almost all of those exact same things in mostly the same order for pretty much every single client. And so once you have that figured out, then we can go back in and figure out, okay, well, where is this workflow not being um, the most effective? Where can we automate some things to get some things off of your plate? Like all those emails you don't have to manually send or manually type every single time. And where can we help you optimize different things and make sure that you are getting to spend time on the client stuff and getting out of your office and away from your computer so that you still get to spend time with your family. Because at the end of the day, we started our businesses to have more freedom and to live a life that we wanted, which did not include sitting in front of a computer 24 seven. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. None of us really, really want that. Even me, I love tech and I love being in front of my computer but 24 seven is way too much. Well, and also too, like, I remember being a planner early on. And I mean, I literally would call, say that I'm in jail, like I'm in email jail is yeah. what I would call it. And I mean, that was like the early, early onset of like tech and email. And I'm so in love with like technology and all the yeah. things, the new things that keep coming out that keep making us better and stronger business leaders. And it's like trying to change the mindset and getting other people to reframe. Like they just see it as like, oh, it's just another thing. It's so like, I, I think they're intimidated by it, but it's actually yeah. just change and people don't like change. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I mean, I definitely love change. No. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like, no, I totally understand that. And I actually, I don't always hop right in with, you need to be using this tool or that tool. Um, I, I really believe that everyone has a good solution for them. And if it means pen and paper, I'm okay with that as long as it's digitized somewhere so that if someone else came in, they can have that list too. Right. So for those of you who are listening, who you love your pen and paper, it's okay, but understand okay. <laughs> that what what you just said Shelley, is super, super important because there's things like Evernote and there's things that, I mean, or I even like a Google doc yeah. is totally fine or a word doc. If you have word, like as long as you type it out and it could be checklist form so that if something were to happen to you and you weren't able to do everything in the process, someone else could step in 
and take over and your clients will be taken care of and the wedding will go on and everything will be fine. Um, cause that's, that literally is one of my biggest nightmares is something were to happen to you and your client's wedding gets ruined. Like that terrifies me. Yeah. I, I don't so having, I don't, I yeah. Don't. Having a system in place so that that never is even an option, I think is one of the best investments and insurance policies you can buy. And it takes you like maybe an hour to sit down and type it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, I mean, I'm 100% on board and I'll say that even trying to get people to type it in a word doc, I'll ask them like, how is your computer backed up or make sure your phone's backed up or things are on the cloud. And they're like, I'm afraid of the cloud. I don't understand the cloud or I'm afraid someone's going to steal my stuff out of the cloud. And I'm like, what what are you talking about? (laughs) What are they stealing from you? And is it like that big of a secret? Cause I'm pretty sure most wedding planners, they have you know, similar processes and there's nothing in your process that is going to be super like rocket science. Yeah. Like when my internship program, I mean, they get access to all of our templates, to every single thing that we're doing so they can learn and go along with us. And one girl said, I can't believe you just give us all of this. Like, I mean, what if we took it and did, I'm like, what are you going to do with it? You don't even understand how to use it. You have no experience. You have no relationships with anyone in the town. Like, what are you going to do with it? Right. So it's just. And even if they take it, like, and do something with it, like, they don't have your clients there. And even if they copy you exactly, you're going to be going after different clients. 100%. It's so there's room for all of us. <laughs> oh, totally. That's why a lot of, they're like, why are you teaching other people to be planners? And why are you sharing your processes? And why are you, and I'm like, guys, I don't know about you, but when I'm like 60 or 70 years old, I'm not going to be running around 25 hours a day, every single weekend, not eating and peeing. Like just, you know, let's be honest here. I mean, 20 years is, is about enough. <laughs> yeah. So it's time for the next venture. You know, I mean, it's, use your experiences and why not share? I I don't, I don't, it's just not my mindset. Um, what would you say are like the biggest challenges that you and your clients have like in our industry? Oh, I honestly, it's probably the letting go of some of the processes and not having to be in the middle of it. And what I mean by that is going ahead and automating some of those emails. So you're not sending them manually every single time or letting another teammate go ahead and take that call or that meeting or going and talking to a vendor. I think letting go control is probably the biggest thing that I see. And not just in the wedding industry, but in any industry, letting go is really hard, especially for solopreneurs. Um, we started the business. It's our baby. We don't want to let go of anything. And honestly, we think we can do it better than everyone else, but it's not true. Like we can do some things better. And that's probably what we started our business to do is those things, but the rest, like other people can do it great and it'll still be amazing. So yeah, that's probably the biggest one. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think like, you know, I'm like you, I love to teach. And so I don't know if you've had similar experiences like this, but like, for example, with our interns, I try to give them a task and I try to give them all the information. However, multiple times in a day on a wedding setup, I miserably fail and it makes me a better leader. And my favorite example is when, um, we had, you know, escort cards, right. It like tells your guest what table to go to. And typically we, we put couples together, Mr. And Mrs. Jones table five. Well, years ago I was doing a wedding for a girl. uh, It was awful. Her little, um, the, the little girl, her dad had passed away and he was like huge into country music, big songwriter. And so 
in honor of him, she wanted to do these records as escort cards and they were magnets. And that's like when magnets were cool back then. (laughs) Tells you how long ago this was. And uh, (laughs) before the stainless steel refrigerators. And um, so, but so we ordered them online. They were probably one of the most expensive favors I've ever had. Oh, I'm sure. Like gold plated, like beautiful. They come in just in time and they're individually wrapped in a plastic bag. Well, that's for a reason. Okay. And I know that. And I just thought that was common sense. So I tell the intern as we're all setting up, I'm like, okay, so I want you to put these in alphabetical order and then lay them out. And here's the board. They go on and, you know, just go from there. And I just walk off, you know, literally for probably two hours and I'm doing something else. And I come back and she has taken every record out of every bag, which she had to. And I asked her to do that, but she was stacking them on top of each other instead of laying them out. And what she didn't know is that smears the ink. (laughs) You can't do that. And so I walk up and she's like, okay, here's the stack of A's and here's the stack of B's. And I'm like, oh my God. And she's like, what's, what is it? And I'm like, honey, this is my fault because I didn't give you clear directions, but the reason they're in the bags is because, you know, so it, it just little things like that. It has allowed yeah. me to understand like, uh, Angela, this is your fault. Like you did not <laughs> clearly think through and you cannot assume that these people know what they're doing because they don't. That's why they're there to learn from you. Exactly. And so I asked her, I'm like, so what would you do in this situation? Because I try to get them to problem solve. Yeah. And of course, you know, then she cried and I'm like, don't cry. It's okay. Like, we'll fix it. She's like, I guess I would go and get a whiteout pen. And I'm like, okay, so go to the store and get a whiteout pen and come back. And like, that's all she did the rest of the night. <laughs> Bless oh her. my goodness. <laughs> like, try to white out all the smeared ink. And it's just like, gosh, if I just would have taken it a step further and said, take it out of the bag, but do not do this because of this, it, it, you know, it could have completely changed your experience, but we learn. Exactly. Uh, Exactly. The other crazy story with something like that is, um, I went to this, do you, did, did you ever have clients that they want to have all this chocolate candy on the table, like in between cake. And I don't know. I don't know why some of my clients want that. They want all these fancy chocolates. So I went and picked out the chocolates and told the manager of the store how much I wanted to get. And then I sent my intern, this was a different intern to pick it up and with my credit card and Apparently, there was just miscommunication about how many pounds of each item, and there were eight different items. So she calls my assistant and she's like, So, this is a lot of chocolate. Like, I don't know if it's going to fit in my car. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> she ends up buying $3,800 worth of chocolate on oh. my company credit card. And you know that they won't let you return that stuff. Right. So again, another where I'm like, okay, so this is my fault. Like really, really big mistake. I thought going ahead of time and telling that manager, like, this is what I want. This is how many pounds of, of each item. But it, it like got lost in translation between the store manager and the person working that day and then her picking it up. And so we um, had a lot of chocolate <laughs> for <laughs> months and we were just you know, trying to like give it away because we couldn't return it. So right. those are like our two, we laugh. It wasn't funny at the time. I'm like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Like, I'm, I don't know when I'm going to have to have a chocolate party or something to get rid of this. Yeah, um, but it's for real. <laughs> and it wasn't her fault. I mean, it's just crazy things like that. Um, yeah, and I think we all have stories like that where we messed stuff? up. So I actually don't, but <laughs> I think it's because I don't do a lot of like client facing work anymore. <laughs> yeah, but I'm also like an overanalyzer, so I will like sit up at night and just like think of all the things that could go wrong with something and all of the scenarios, like, how do I get out of that? Like, how do I prevent that? <laughs> like, yeah. That's who I am. I'm the worrier. <laughs> yeah. 
I guess like, I don't know. Sometimes I just, my mind never shuts off. It's just yes. constantly going and it's like, okay, I need to do Absolutely. this and this and this and this. Yeah. So and my yeah. mom was a warrior. So I'm like, okay, you can't worry about everything. I'm like, there is a bigger power in control sometimes like with the weather and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> Not control the weather. Um, but so what, so when you came, when you started your business, I guess social media existed, but mm -hmm. you still were saying how important it is to like build that in-person relationship, like with your community. Yes. So what does that mean exactly? So we all need people in our lives that we can lean on. And when you start your business, there is like, you actually need that more. You need other like-minded business owners that you can lean on because most of the time, the people in our current circle of friends and family don't understand what it means to run your own business, especially today where everyone here is like, oh, you have an online business. What does that mean? Like most people don't understand what that means. And so by reaching out to other entrepreneurs, you are creating the circle around yourself of people that you can lean on whenever business gets hard. And when it gets really hard to figure out, okay, well, what is the next step that I take? Where do I go from here? Or I had this nightmare client, like help me navigate this. I don't, I don't know what to do. And so for me, that means actually building relationships with people and it could be online, but I also truly believe that you need to be in the same space and the same energy as someone else around you. Um, and so finding networking events and um, co-working events that you can go to, it has been life-changing for me and being able to build relationships with people here in the Bay Area that I can lean on. I can call and say, hey, like what is going on? Like, are your couples acting like this? Like what, like seriously, what's going on? And then they'll usually be like, oh yeah, like this and this is happening. And I was like, oh, I didn't even realize that. Um, and so just having those relationships and being able to lean on those other people has been completely invaluable in my business. And I see it in other people's businesses as well, because running your own business can get really lonely and really difficult. But if you have those people that you can reach out to, it makes the loneliness like kind of fade away and you're able to handle those difficult situations a little better. Yeah. I mean, I could not second that anymore because it's, people don't understand. Like I grew up in the, in a family where it's like, I, we, we really did turn to our mom and dad and say, what should we do? Um, but in entrepreneur land, it is not like that at all. Unless your parents were, you know, in that space, my parents were not in that space at all. And yeah. so it can get really lonely. And then I think when I, I stopped working in healthcare, like my parents thought they thought I was sick. They're like, what's wrong with you? Why would you quit your, your stable job with yeah. insurance and benefits? And, yeah. you know, I've been surrounded by other entrepreneurs that I really, I'm like, oh my God, these are my people. Like they understand <laughs> me. And yes. I, I, I mean, I would say probably I hear, you know, I'm in Nashville. I hear of Silicon Valley, how everyone down there is just very entrepreneurial and very into tech. Like, in fact, one of our entrepreneur organization presidents who started our chapter 20 something years ago, moved to Silicon Valley for part time because he is doing this tech drone company and just, he did not have the resources in Nashville at all. And right. so it's just, you know, people know, and I love how your husband was like, if I'm going to do this, I have to move here. I'm going to pick up and go where I need to go to get what I need to get. You supported him. And then although your teaching certificate didn't transfer over, it's like, okay, how can I take this? And I'm going to solve this and still be happy. Exactly. So I feel like some people that I work with too, they're like, well, I'm in this small town and there's no clients and they have no money. And I'm like, well, what are you doing about it? Like, right. you know, I, I don't, but again, that goes back to mindset of surrounding yourself with the right people. Yeah. And the other thing I'll say about that is that I know that there are some cities, small towns that people don't want to help each other. They are cutthroat. They, they will not help each other. But I will tell you, there are lots and lots and lots of conferences out there where mm -hmm. you can go and 
again, network and learn from others. And absolutely don't see it as like, Oh my God, that's another a thousand dollars. I see it as like investing in yourself and in your company and into your clients so that you can better serve them. Yes. So are there any conferences that you would recommend for people who are in small towns that don't really have the advantage of being able to network where they currently live or work? Yeah. So I would actually suggest that you, if you're using any tools, um, or if you're advertising on like the knot or wedding wire, check out their conferences. I've been to wedding wire world and it was actually really, really good. I learned a ton about a lot of business things, not just specific to the wedding industry, but about like running my business. And I also met incredible people in the wedding industry from all over the country. Um, and so no matter what conference you end up going to, um, make sure that you are taking advantage of the networking times that you have. So in between the different sessions and go to the dinners or the after parties or whatever you have that are more like the networking times and just talk to people, talk to them like they're humans, not like you're trying to get anything out of them and just work on building a relationship, treat it like a first date. Like you're getting to know the person you want to find out about them, about their business and kind of what makes them tick. And then see it after the conference, like stay in touch. Um, I love doing virtual coffee dates with people. And so we'll hop on a video conference. It could be on Skype or FaceTime, or if you are using more sophisticated software like Zoom, just talk to them and you get to see them face to face, even though we're in different countries or cities. In fact, I talked to um, one of my, two of my friends that I talk to pretty much every day. One of them lives in Canada. The other one lives in LA. We don't live in the same city and we hop on Zoom all the time and talk. And so going back to the conferences, find conferences that align to what you want to do in your business and where you want to go next. So Wedding Wire World is a great conference to go to if you're interested in learning a, a wide range of things about the wedding industry and how to run your business. If you're looking for something more um, focused, there are conferences out there that are more focused um, and you can find them. Just do a quick Google search. And you'll find a lot of conferences that are on the wedding industry, but have a more narrow focus to help you really hone in on some new skills. Yeah. In fact, a lot of the techie things that I learn don't have anything to do with our industry. Like I go to these and that's so true. <laughs> yeah, so I, I feel like I go, cause people will ask me like, how do you know this stuff? Or where do you hear this stuff? I'm like, well, I go to these entrepreneur conferences and I meet other people and like, we actually keep in touch. And it's funny because at some point in someone's life, they are a either going to get married or B plan some type of an event where they're going to remember, Oh my gosh, that's that event tech person. Yes. And they'll like, I get the most random text messages sometimes. And thank God I put notes in my phone of like where I meet people and how I meet people. <laughs> Absolutely. Because like yesterday, some guy, Greg, he was in my phone, Greg. And I'm like, there, he's like, Hey, my friend is, uh, something about a wedding venue. He goes to Belmont and he needs to film something and he's having trouble. And it's my friend's son's best friend's roommate. I don't even, I'm like, sure. I'm like, who is this? And then I clicked into my notes and it was like EO Bangkok. And it's like, Oh, okay. I met him at global leadership conference in Bangkok with the entrepreneur organization. So yeah. it's just funny that these people, and I'll do the same thing. I'll be like, Oh yeah, let me ask that person. Exactly. So, you know, I'll just ping them and people will say, I don't mean to bother you, but I know you can probably, I'm like, why are you, why do you think you're bothering me? Like, I would love to help you make sure that your kid's best friend's roommate can get, you know, a, a good grade on his project at Belmont. So it's just, it's all about networking. And in fact, the, the latest conference that someone asked me about their, I think it's called a uh, tech conversion, traffic conversion. And I'm like, yeah, I, I think I'm going to go next year because, you know, I'm to that point to where I want to teach online. And again, it's not something that I was really looking to do last year or the year before. It's just, there's a need in our industry for education yes. and for leadership. And honestly, I don't know too, I think 
you're the only other person <laughs> that <laughs> even knows like productivity. Like whenever I saw your name, I was like, oh my gosh, she does like, we do kind of the same, like, it's so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it's so rare to find people who understand the value of time and the value of being productive. Yes. So it's just, it's such a breath of fresh air. Um, do Yay. you like tell our listeners, like, where can they find out more about you? Because you've got a podcast and I believe a membership or how yeah. can you, they can best find you. Yeah. So the absolute best way to reach me is, um, on Instagram. I hang out there pretty much 24 seven because I love it and have even before I started my business. Um, and my username is at Chelsea B Foster. I'm also on Facebook, although I don't check it as regularly. Um, also at Chelsea B Foster. And then if you want to listen to the podcast, my podcast is all about helping you prevent burnout in your business. Um, and we actually cover a lot of mindset things. Um, and I train you on some productivity tips as well. Um, uh, it's called the burnout proof your biz podcast, and you can find it on any podcast app that you listen to. I'm on all of them. Um, and then I do also have a membership site where I deep dive with other entrepreneurs on their businesses, teaching them how to organize and more streamline their businesses. Um, we do workshops and I teach my workshops very much like a class where I do a little training and then we actually dive into your business and you get to implement right there on the workshop call. Um, and then we do get stuff done sessions where I teach you how to be productive. I have a variation on the Pomodoro method. Um, if you've ever heard of that, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, check out the website and see if these get stuff done sessions would be um, something that you would like doing, but basically we get on a call and I teach you how to get like most of your to-do list done in two hours instead of eight hours. Um, and that is called the empowered boss lab. And you can find that at the empowered boss lab.com. I love it. You guys check it out. We, it's funny. We have a, we have a GSD retreat that is coming yes. up that we do annually and it's not really focused on like, you know, how to get your workflow, but more on um, how to market your company and your business a year ahead. Yes. So creating consistent content when you're trying to grow your business or share experiences or more importantly, when you are trying to move your business into a new direction, you yes. actually have to think ahead <laughs> for yourself. Yeah, you really do. Yeah. It's not just, things don't happen overnight. It takes time for you to get traction in any new direction. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so true. And so as entrepreneurs, I feel like it's really hard for us to have, have the discipline to sit down and actually pump out content for yes. like an entire year in a week. It's like, yeah. what? We do it all the time. It's just, um, well, oh once gosh. a year, once a year. That um, sounds amazing. <laughs> but it's like, we're there to help each other and focus. And it also becomes a little competitive because people like will do subject lines and then like blindfold each other and say, okay, who would open that? <laughs> or, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, you just have fun with it. And then once you have data that really shows, like if you do use a software, Mm -hmm. um, or you use AB split testing with yes. um, lead pages or I don't want with to anything. You can even do AB testing on your own. You don't have to use special software for it. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, even, uh, I guess people can do like Facebook polls and Instagram polls and yeah. you know, that's how we have helped put out information is just by asking people what they want. Exactly. Like, don't assume just because you think people will want it, that they're going to bite at it. Because if it's not a need, most people buy nah, what they don't need. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we're all guilty of it. Oh yeah. Um, we don't need Starbucks every day, you know, but I it, mean, some of us do. <laughs> But, you know, if it makes you work harder and, um, or smarter, not harder, you know, whatever floats your boat. Right. Um, but <laughs> guys, if you are listening and you have too much to do and you're not really understanding or seeing how to outsource or how to ask for help, please, please reach out because there are people out there like Chelsea and myself who want to help you streamline your processes 
So Chelsea, thank you so much for being on. This was awesome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Well, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and be sure to tune in next week to see what we are covering on Weddings Unveiled. Have a great day. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list. And if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.